Hey guys, welcome back to the channel here. This is the last and final mod I have to do to this car this year. I was on the fence about it all winter and I just pulled the trigger on it. Uh, you know, being in quarantine and everything, I need more things to work on on the car. So, this is the Saki Bomb uh, SBG oil cooler for the S2000. And I'm just unboxing it here, started putting together a bracket and decided to start filming. So they give you really nice instructions to go through and do this. It starts off by saying pull your uh, fuel pump fuse, remove that from your dash and then um, you know, start assembling these little brackets and take off this shroud, I guess. They want you to take off this, this plastic radiator shroud uh, to start. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that in a second. But um, just to give you guys an overview, uh, they have a bunch of different options on their website. I did the upgrade for the nylon braided lines, which is the highest option. I think it adds $75 to the package deal. So. Nylon braiding is, is very, very nice um, as opposed to like uh, stainless steel or the, or the standard rubber hoses. Um, that definitely looks pretty sexy. So, um, But the only thing I didn't pay extra for is I got the um, Kragen, which is the, the free upgrade, 25-row uh, Kragen oil cooler. I didn't get the C, the C trap upgrade. I kind of just went with the standard Kragen 25-row uh, oil cooler here. I think it's going to do the job just fine on my car. I'm not boosted or anything running a pretty conservative all-motor setup with just a couple bolt-ons and a Gretti E-Manage uh, base tune. So don't think I'll be seeing the oil temps that a uh, boosted car will. So this will probably be no more than enough uh, for what I need being that I'm racing mostly in the Northeast and we don't see the temperatures all year round that the Southern states do. So in addition to the cooler, they give you all these little brackets and stuff and then the sandwich plate that uh, adapts uh, underneath your oil filter. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start removing stuff. This is gonna allow you to just hammer down on the track for as long as you want and not have to worry about taking cool down laps. So another option that they uh, talked about is you either have a option to do a 180 degree thermostat or a 200 degree thermostat. I went with the 200 and uh, the idea behind the thermostat is it's not gonna just like open from fully closed at 200 degrees. It's gonna be slightly open the whole time even when the engine's cold but at 200 degrees it goes full open. So there's always gonna be some recirculation of oil through this uh, oil cooler and it'll go full bore at 200 degrees. All right, so I got the lines kind of just draped over the way the instructions show them. And I just mounted the cooler. Uh, it's pretty rigid in there. I kind of like the design. Um, you know, it's pretty solid. There's pretty much two mounting points to the frame of the car. The first one is in the center. You can see in there, this L bracket kind of goes back and grabs off this AC service valve, which is, uh, you know, access from the top with the uh, cooling shield there. Um, but that is the two 10 millimeter head bolts back there connected to this L bracket. This L bracket is a little undersized, so it does like stretch and tweak the bottom of the cooler when you tighten everything down. Um, they might have been able to hold a little bit tighter of a tolerance on that bracket to get it so it doesn't flex like that. And the, a problem I ran into was, you know, was keeping this thing mounted pretty much level in the car. As you can see right now, it's uh, it's pretty level horizontally in the car, but I had to do something different than the instructions showed because I must have out of tolerance brackets or something because this L bracket that mounts up here, this cooler is supposed to mount below it. So when you look under here, you can see my aluminum piece is below the cooler right now. That should be on top of it. And I had to stack five washers in each location. So I had to use 10 washers total. Um, Ideally, I would have had spacers that were about a quarter inch thick, but I don't want to run to the hardware store if I don't have to, so I got stainless steel washers laying around. Had 10 of them. That spaces the uh, cooler up higher so that when you tighten it, it doesn't, you know, bend those edge flanges on the, the black part of the cooler, the, you know, the pieces that hang out. And I, I found a couple Honda bolts, as you can see on the top. Those black head bolts, those are 10 millimeter heads. Those aren't the bolts included with the kit. They include the stainless steel like button head screws, but I used the nuts on the bottom and I used those laying around, those, those screws I had that were a little longer so I could just get enough thread engagement on the nuts below. But if I installed it the way it had in the instructions, this thing would have been sitting at like an angle like that and it was extremely noticeable. Pretty goofy looking in there, so um, that's what I did to correct that. I don't know if anyone else has had this problem or if I just got a bad batch of parts. But overall, it was a minor fix. 
not a big deal. I guess it's a bigger deal if you don't have a bunch of hardware laying around to fix that. But um, I'm going to go ahead now and install the fittings on top of the cooler, fill it up with oil, and then um, go ahead and install the sandwich plate. All right, so I got the oil cooler routed now. I filled it with oil. It took, I don't know, probably close to a quart for the cooler itself. I've got the 45 degree fitting hose end on this side. Kind of routes nicely up through there. And I got the 90 degree on the far side. These two come through this cavity right here. And um, there's a bracket they include with two hose clamps to tie off this ground bolt. I'll show you that later. But now, as you saw in my last video I uploaded, I did relocate my um, oil pressure sensor uh, unit. So now I'm going to be removing the oil filter and putting the sandwich plate on. This is the sandwich plate they include. Um, and then you use this piece here to thread on. And then, so then it just recreates the oil filter threads on the other side and has the female to go straight on. Tie that in there. Um, coming along pretty good. Then I just have two other fittings to install on that and then connect the ends of this hose right here to the cooler and we should be ready to start it up. All right, so just got the sandwich plate installed in the two fittings that um, go onto the sandwich plate. That's how it looks down there. I don't have the best lighting, but uh, you can see sandwich fitting block right there, the two fittings you're going to connect to. And um, I didn't really have a, there's no torque spec listed for the, the nut, uh, you know, the threaded stud that holds it, the sandwich plate to the block. And um, you can see there's still a lot of gasket exposed, a little black gasket between the two. So it's not like the oil filter where you torque it down and you get metal on metal and then you hit a torque value. The sandwich plate I kind of just did by feel. Um, I got it pretty tight, but I don't want to crank on this thing too much. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, and just assume that's fine. I wish there was like a torque value you could hit, but maybe you can't specify a torque value on that because you're always compressing a rubber gasket. So in theory, it'll go keep going and going and going, but um, go ahead and uh, wrap those lines on there. First thought about the lines are I think they are like six inches longer than I'd like them to be. So I'm going to have to see how the routing looks when I get done, but they are kind of goofily long for where the ports are located. All right, so I spent quite a bit of time here and reworked some of the hose routing. Um, I angled, this fitting was more of towards like that angle and made a nicer run before, but I straightened it more to a 90 to the car right now just to pull it back a little more. I got the included hose clamps and their included spacers mounted to my ground here. You can see it kind of just bolts right where the factory ground is. The top line, they crisscross right here and there, you can see in here, there's a tiny bit of clearance to the AC line which I wrapped in Gorilla Tape so nothing sharp against the line and then this line's not touching anything for the entrance to the oil cooler and then the exits over here. Um, and then uh, nicely routed there and this contacts this edge over here so right here I put a little bit of edge trim which I had left over from my interior install so that the hose on the outside contacts the vinyl edge trim as opposed to the metal edge here is where an O2 factory horn mounts I know that throughout the years this may have changed I know this car has two horns uh, there's one down here as I showed earlier and the second one I took off right now what I did with that is put a little bit of edge trim underneath it so that this will kind of clamp those hoses down. All right, guys, so here is the completed kit. Um, as you can see down there, I got the fittings kind of spaced apart just by a hair so that they don't contact each other for vibration. The oil filter is torqued down, but one thing I will say is you can't get to it from the top of the car anymore, and you can't put a torque wrench on it from the top of the car because it bumps it out about an inch. So with the OEM heat shield, you can't get to it. you got to do it underneath the car now, which is kind of a pain because I always used to just check its torque up top and everything and never had to get underneath the car for it. I always used to do my oil changes with the filter from the top too, but not a huge deal. Um, at first, I was really bummed out because I thought the hoses were way too long, like six inches long to make perfect routing. And the routing, I would agree, would probably be a little cleaner if they were about six inches shorter each. But to compensate for that, I went underneath the horn. As I mentioned, I have the uh, stripping so that there's nothing abrasive touching the hose. And then the stripping 
over here so there's nothing abrasive touching the hose on the edge there. This bracket works out decent and uh, guides them nicely through here and then everything seems to be torqued down now. So um, when I put the Takeda intake back in there, the box is pretty large so it's going to push you know, up against these and push them towards the torque damper. Everything fits extremely close in here. Um, Definitely making it more congested to work on, but it should be a lot more reliable on the track. Here's a look from the front. Don't mind my paper towel on the way there. Pretty sweet setup. Um, but yeah, so uh, it's almost like um, if this one of these 90 degree fittings was like an extra long fitting and you could have them routed both out at the same spot and the, the fittings both pointing straight up or something because you got to kind of do some weird funky angle with them with the way it's currently set up and one thing i will say is when tightening the oil filter um i got underneath the car and kind of held on the fittings of the sandwich plate while i was torquing the oil filter um the first time i did it the i noticed the sandwich plate started to twist once i got near 20 foot pounds on the oil filter so i screwed unscrewed the oil filter and then i took my um my wrench here, my you need a one inch socket and your uh, ratchet here. And I ground the end of it flat, kind of like I did on the flywheel bolts with the belt sander. But I also put a chamfer around the edge because you can't really get good engagement on the hex of the piece, this, the threaded stud that tightens that sandwich plate to the engine. So when I made these mods, it seemed to fit in there much, much better. So once I did that, I got underneath the car, held the fittings with one hand, and, and tightened that that bolt on the inside harder. Now there is no torque spec that Saki Bomb specifies for that. So I kind of just went till I thought was pretty hard. Um, you can still see the gasket sticking out on the side there, um, the, the black gasket material, but um, I wrenched it down probably another eighth of a turn or quarter turn and um, really didn't feel comfortable wrenching on it more. So uh, once that's tightened down, then I tighten the oil filter back and kind of just held my hand on these fittings to, just to try to help uh, it reach torque without trying to twist the sandwich plate. And I did hit the 20 foot pounds and nothing moved. So I'm um, pretty confident in the way it's routed and um, you know the torque of everything right now. It's very tough to get to these fittings down here to torque them and to have one wrench. You know, I used um, two Crescent wrenches, you know, an eight inch Pittsburgh and then this other eight inch thinner husky one I have both set them at an inch and Getting getting to these is very difficult. You got to tighten the top one first And then you can go underneath and tighten the bottom one because the hexes are so close to each other You can't fit um, a wrench in between them very easy when they're when they're both on there So I'd recommend screwing the top one down first and then getting underneath the bottom one tightening that down, but um Overall, I think it looks pretty sick. Um, pretty pretty clean routing. I think it'll look even neater with the intake back in there. But, um, you know, the nylon braiding is a very nice touch to your engine bay. If you're going to, you know, buy this kit, I'd recommend getting that. If, I would not recommend the stainless steel braided hoses because they're going to be abrasive just like my, um, like my remote oil pressure sensor here. And that's a very abrasive stainless steel. And if that were, you know, contacting the uh, engine bay, on the red like this is you know it's pushing against that pretty hard and then it's pushing a lot against the, the wall over here and whatnot so uh, the stainless steel would probably vibrate the paint off of your car and you won't want that so um, I think it's a nice upgrade I would either do the you know if you don't care about aesthetics you could do the the standard rubber hoses but I just would either do the nylon or the standard rubber wouldn't bother with the stainless steel braided ones but uh, I'm gonna go ahead now and roll it over and uh, recheck my oil level.
Kyle Cooler, I'm calling officially done now. The intake box is back in, and this is quite a bit bigger depth-wise than the stock intake box, so it makes it really, really tight. Um, definitely this is a nice intake, but it gives you less engine bay room to work with behind the engine. The Ingalls torque dampener is very tight to it, and the hoses route just, just, I mean, if it was a quarter inch off in any direction, anything grew in a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch even maybe, this would not fit, but I have just enough room for this hose, and the other hose barely doesn't make contact with the hex of this, and uh, the box does push on them probably an eighth of an inch back when you install this box. Nothing too crazy to try to put a load or anything on the fittings down there. Um, very, very light bend to it. Wow, guys, it fits like a glove here. Um, came out pretty, pretty good in my opinion. I added one more uh, adhesive back rubber piece to one of the, you know, painted over welds on the shock tower here. Just so that the hose, you know, this is the Ingalls torque damper where this is could contact and rub against is very smooth. I'm not worried about that. And then this is missing the hex there. Everything's very, very tight. Like I said, I have the underneath the horn is the edge trim. And on the edge of this cutout for the headlights is the edge trim. And then I have my clamp there. Just fired it up. Gave it some revs up to 6,000 RPM. Oil pressure was 90 PSI for quite a while. Held it at like 3,000 RPM for quite a while to do the idle relearn since uh, the battery is out of the car all winter. But uh, there's no leaks as of now. <laughs> The oil filter doesn't leak, everything doesn't leak, so overall I'm calling this a success right now. I'll report back on future videos if I run into any problems, but the engine bay of this car is finally ready for 2020. I'm going to go ahead and throw the bumper back on the front and then uh, start jacking up each wheel since I've had the suspension all apart all winter and jack up each rotor to the proper riding height and then torque all the bushings down to a marked location from where all the caster adjustments and camera adjustments were sent last year. And then I'll drive it around for a little while on some old tires. Alignment should be close to what it was last year, but it definitely won't be the same. So I'm gonna get an alignment scheduled here within the next week. And uh, got a race, the first event, S2K Takeover, in about two and a half to three weeks from now. So uh, hopefully I don't run into any issues, but the car is almost back together and I'm very excited to take it out for a spin. Guys, so there's one thing that's really not mentioned in the instructions and that's when you put this shroud back, the OEM cooling duct for the radiator and stuff, it hits on the, the 45 degree hose on the inside on this side of the oil cooler. You have to trim the plastic to get this in. This is very difficult to get in there with the cooler bending this and trying not to cut the lines or anything or put too much pressure against them. but. You know, this needs to sit down on this surface on the face here to put the pins through. And we're hitting on the top of the line there, so um, no way that's going to work. I'm going to have to pull it out and trim some plastic away. I marked with a Sharpie kind of this this whole edge needs to be cut away. So keep that in mind before you take the time to put it back in. I'll show you the cut I make here in a second. All right, so these are my highly sophisticated markings of the driver or the passenger side of the shroud. I'm going to want to cut pretty much this whole... You know, maybe leave a quarter inch lip, but follow this whole edge down. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just cut this whole thing off. All right, so this is the cut after I just used some tin snips. I definitely didn't break out the Dremel for this one and make it as neat as I did the OEM roll hoops to fit back in the car because you're not really going to see this. But here's my uh, crude angle cut through there, and I'm going to try to get this thing back in there and take number two. All right, so I spruced it up even a little more. I added, I had some extra edge trim from the interior job still, so I added a little piece along the front starting down there as you can see and because it, it pretty much just contacts the hose so there will be no sharp pieces of plastic poking in. It's got that nice vinyl edge trim or rubber edge trim touching the hose just like it does in the horn over there so now it is finally complete. 